In this video, we're going to take a look at how we relate graphs to events. So the first thing we need to understand, um, at least from a sense of vocabulary, is there are two types of graphs. Well, there's multiple types of graphs. But there are going to be graphs that we are going to say are linear. So in other words, the graphs will be straight lines. Something looking like that, that has straight lines. And there are going to be graphs that are not linear or nonlinear. And basically, the non means not a line. So, for example, we might look at something like this, okay, which we would say is nonlinear. When we take a look at these graphs, these graphs will a lot of times tell stories or tell about what's going on, but it's always in relationship, um, the relationship between two quantities. So, for example, when I look, take a look at this graph, I'm looking at what is the altitude of the helicopter with respect to time. So, for example, if I'm going to trace it, I'm going to say that the altitude is going to increase as my graph increases up until about 5,000 feet, which is right here on the graph. And then from that time on, and that's at 10 minutes, and then after that the altitude decreases. So basically, altitude is a fancy way of saying height. So I'm going to basically say the elevator is going to go up. I'm sorry, the helicopter is going to go up in the air to 5,000 feet and then decrease. So if I could summarize the story, I would say that the helicopter takes off. Okay. Gaining height, gaining altitude or height. Okay. Um, fairly evenly. Until um, for the first ten minutes. until 5,000 feet and then begins to descend until landing at 20 minutes. So when we talk about relating graphs to events, we're talking about this where we come up with a little story describing what's going on with the shape of the graph, but always in relationship. Probably the one of the most important things to notice is what is the measurement here? What is the measurement with here? So the altitude versus time is height, basically height and time. Now what we can also measure, or what we also need practice with, is how we make graphs. So if Kim measures her pulse rate occasionally during a 45 minute workout, Okay, so basically I'm going to look at having a graph where I might have 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Okay, so this is going to be my time, which is usually along the x-axis, and I'm going to be in minutes. And then the pulse rate is going to be over here. Okay. Now, I'm not given any pulse rates, but I need to come up with a graph. So, we have a 10 minute warm up period, so usually pulse rate will start relatively low. Okay. Not necessarily at zero, but it'll start low. And then the 10 minutes would be the warm up. The exercising, and then the last 10 minutes is going to be the cool down. Okay, where we're going to hopefully return back to regular state. So when we talk about pulse rate, basically what will generally happen with pulse rate is that you'll begin low and then it'll increase during the warm-up period 
it'll stay fairly constant during the period of exercise and then during the cool down it'll hopefully return to about where it started. So this is about where, where I get the graph for this. Okay. Other types of graphs are given where we are going to measure the distance from home during the trip. So distance with respect to time. So once again, I'm going to put the time down here. And it seems like it's five minutes increments. So it's going to be zero minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes in, 25 minutes in, 30 minutes in. And this is going to be in minutes. And I'm going to be comparing that to distance. Okay. So for the first 10 minutes, you walk from home to the park. Okay. So that's going to be the first 10 minutes. For the next 5 minutes, you're going to watch a game in the park. So you're going to stay there. So for the last five minutes, then, I'm going to run to my friend's house. Okay. I have to know where my friend's house was. But let's say then I would go to my friend's house. Okay. Which is a little bit beyond the park. Um... The other thing I need to take into account is the speed at which I'm walking. So with I'm walking, I'm going to be walking at this distance. If I'm going to be running, my speed will increase, so it needs to be steeper. Okay. So these are the types of graphs which we're going to continue to work with and to develop. But just keep in mind that every graph tells a story and you always want to pay attention to what the labels are and to what the shape of the graph is and begin to think about what is the story that it's telling.